Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed and another monthly GPU pricing update. It's the one year anniversary of the series today. I really was hoping not to be making GPU price updates in March of 2022. I was really hoping prices would have normalized by now, but here we are. Luckily, it's no longer the same doom and gloom editions of this series that I was making in the later part of 2021. In fact, this month's pricing update is another positive one for people looking to finally purchase a new GPU for their latest gaming PC build. Speaking of PC building, today's video is sponsored by Epic Games and PC Building Simulator 2, which is coming soon to the Epic Game Store. PC Building Simulator 2 is a major overhaul on the cult hit original, bringing way better graphics and all new features. Players will be able to enjoy a new suite of enthusiast features like thermal imaging, power monitoring, custom water blocks, and revamped thermal paste tools. In addition, you'll gain access to case and workshop customization to elevate your build to the next level. There's even a new career story and soundtrack. I personally thought the original game was very unique and fun, and I can't wait to check out the sequel. Click the link in the description below to add PC Building Simulator 2 to your Epic Game Store wishlist now. No new GPU launches this month after a bit of activity in the last few months, with launches like the RTX 3050 and RX 6500 XT from Nvidia and AMD respectively, although there are a few upcoming products before we get into next-gen GPU launches, hopefully at the end of this year. One of them is the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti from Nvidia that was announced back at CES, but hasn't materialized just yet. We're expecting to hear more about that one shortly. Then on the AMD side, there are rumors of a mid cycle RDNA 2 refresh before RDNA 3 launches, though that's just an unconfirmed report at this stage. But it doesn't really matter that we're not getting new GPUs because the GPUs we do have this generation are now finally in plentiful stock pretty much everywhere. This is the first month since the launch of the RTX 30 series in September 2020 where you can buy any new current gen GPU at Newegg from a first party listing that's in stock now ready to go. This has been the case at a lot of retailers in other regions for many months. We've talked about that several times in this series previously, but those in the United States are now also finally benefiting from good availability of any GPU. Of course, good availability doesn't mean good pricing. We're still not in a position where current retail pricing is matching the advertised MSRPs, but we're getting close. And if products continue to sit on store shelves, prices will continue to fall like has been the case throughout the start of 2022. There have also been unconfirmed rumors of Nvidia lowering the price they sell their GPUs to AIBs. And while we were unable to verify that, there is clear evidence of prices improving. So plenty of price movement is happening either way. As we noted on Twitter, locally here in Australia, prices for many overpriced GPUs have been falling substantially, some falling off a cliff in just a single day. The ASUS GeForce RTX 3080 Tough Gaming OC was one example, falling from $2,300 Australian dollars to $1,500 overnight, a cool 35% reduction in one go. For some of the most expensive products, the ones that have managed to resist price corrections up until this point, we're expecting even more of that in the coming weeks. Here's where pricing currently sits for all current generation GPUs on Newegg, using the cheapest in stock and available first party products at the retailer. Now this list was accurate at the time of producing the video, but of course pricing is changing quite often. So we'd recommend checking the links in the description for up to date information if you are interested. But anyway, here's where things are landing at the moment. Across all 16 GPUs, the average price inflation at Newegg right now is 44% above MSRP, although this does vary substantially depending on the exact model. Older GPUs released with, let's say, more unrealistic MSRPs have the highest amount of inflation at the moment. For example, the RTX 3070 is sitting 72% above its $500 MSRP, and the RX 6800 XT is sitting 74% above its $650 MSRP. However, newer GPUs with MSRPs set during the middle of the GPU pricing crisis have much less pronounced inflation. Right now you can purchase a Radeon RX 6600 for just 21% over MSRP and the 6500 XT for just 13% above MSRP. We're also seeing similar with the RTX 3080 Ti at 19% above MSRP, which is the lowest inflation for a GeForce GPU. 
We can also see a general difference between NVIDIA and AMD products. NVIDIA's average price inflation was 50%, while AMD's was 38%, a far better situation than during most of 2021, where both brands were over 100% inflation. The reasons for this discrepancy are likely that AMD's MSRPs have been slightly more realistic, especially for their entry-level cards, and also that NVIDIA GPUs are typically in higher demand and therefore in shorter supply. Obviously, one key question here is, well, we've seen prices reduced from well over double MSRP to now just 1.5 times MSRP, so how close to MSRP can we get? As it stands, I see no reason why prices can't continue to fall, and indeed you'll likely see small price drops throughout the week on various products if you check back daily. I expect we're not that far away from the RX 6600 and RX 6500 XT hitting MSRP or within 10% of MSRP, which is a fairly standard AIP sort of margin. For the most in-demand and least realistically priced products, such as the RTX 3070 and RTX 3060, hitting those MSRPs is going to take longer, but we certainly haven't reached the price floor just yet. It's also important to note that we've just been talking about the lowest available prices for all current gen GPUs. There is still a heap of variation between the cheapest and the most expensive GPUs. Take the Radeon RX 6900 XT as an example. The cheapest model in stock and sold by Newegg is the Phantom Gaming D model from ASRock at $1300 US, or alternatively the Nitro Plus from Sapphire and Gaming X Trio from MSI. But if you want the Gigabyte Aorus Master version, you're looking at more like $1600 US, which frankly isn't going to see many sales at a $300 premium over the others. As for the scalper market, well, the resurgence of the retail market where you can just go to a store and buy products at any time has basically killed off the business model of scalpers. The availability of brand new GPUs on eBay has plummeted in the last month, and many of the models that are listed don't end up selling as they're simply overpriced compared to the cheapest models at retail. And as a buyer, why would you take the risk on some random eBay seller over a retailer? even if that retail is Newegg, and of course there are other choices. With that said, some suckers are still purchasing cards on eBay, and we have lots of historical data for the scalper market, so let's take a look at how pricing has moved in the last month. For NVIDIA GPUs, and indeed AMD GPUs as well, every card has hit its lowest price since we began recording data at the start of 2021. Prices have dropped by 10% on average, not quite as substantial as the drops we saw in February, but still very solid price movement that gets many cards closer to their MSRP. Also, this data isn't directly comparable to what we were showing for Newegg retail prices, as at Newegg we were using lowest price, whereas on eBay we've been using averages. However, it's interesting to note that the average sold price on eBay is 14% higher for NVIDIA GPUs than Newegg's lowest price, which is actually quite close to the amount eBay charges sells in fees, and obviously you wouldn't buy on eBay if you could get it cheaper on Newegg. AMD GPUs, a very similar story with every GPU hitting its lowest price in the past year, well down on the crazy high peaks we saw in May of 2021. AMD GPUs fell in price on average by 13%, including a huge 22% drop for the RX 6600, which I suspect is due to substantial retail market pressure for a card that's now widely available. The average sale price for AMD cards was 11% higher than the lowest price at Newegg, so again, it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy from a scalper unless you happen to get a, say, a lower than retail deal and end up costing the seller money, which is a good thing as no one likes scalpers. eBay still has a purpose though, and a good one at that, and that's of course for used GPUs. Given the way the market is headed, if you do have a used GPU lying around, you might want to sell it sooner rather than later as pricing is unlikely to head back up anytime soon. For GeForce 20 series cards, as an example, prices fell 11% month on month, and Turing GPUs are now finally selling used for roughly their MSRP, or in some cases lower. The RTX 2060 Super is the outlier here. That card is in demand and is bizarrely selling for $500 US used on average, which is about what it costs to buy a new and much faster RTX 3060. In our day one testing, the RTX 3060 was 17% faster at 1440p, so make sure you watch out for these anomalies if you are planning on heading into the used market to buy a card. The GeForce 16 series remains inflated as these GPUs have only recently received new competition like the RTX 3050 and RX 6600 since prices have dropped. However, prices have come down 12% on average in the last month, and I expect prices to fall even further as again there are a few anomalies here. 
AMD's Radeon RX 6600 is available for around $400 new, just 14% more than the GTX 1660 Super is going for used on average, yet the RX 6600 is over 35% faster, so in that instance it makes a lot more sense to get a new RX 6600. There is a flip side to that though, and that's the GTX 1650 Super at $220 used on average. The main new competition here is the RX 6500 XT from AMD, which is priced at $225 new on Newegg right now. However, the GTX 1650 Super was actually a little bit faster in our testing than the 6500 XT when using PCI 4.0, and much faster when both are in a PCI 3.0 system. The 1650 Super also has other benefits like including full media encoder support and more display outputs, so I still think it's the obvious choice even if the card is used. Pascal GPUs have fallen in price by 10% on average, now sitting 25% below their ancient MSRPs from over 5 years ago. In most instances here, it's hard to recommend buying such an old GPU. They might have been a good and cheap stopgap option when pricing was insane, but these days it just doesn't feel right to recommend Pascal when prices continue to fall in the new market and for better used GPUs. AMD Radeon RX 5000 series GPUs. Oh boy, if you didn't sell one of these cards previously, you've kind of missed a trick here. These first-gen RDNA cards have fallen in price by a huge 18% month-on-month, which is almost entirely due to the reduction in profitability for crypto mining. We haven't talked a lot about the crypto market in this video, but basically, mining profitability is lower than ever, and the 5000 series was especially good at mining and therefore highly sought after for mining rigs. As the crypto market continues to stagnate and fall, owners of cards like the 5700 XT and mining rigs don't want them anymore and are selling them at much lower prices than previously, although it still doesn't quite make sense to buy them just yet. And finally, we have AMD's older GPUs in the Polaris and Vega series. Many of these GPUs have also been affected by crypto mining, with large price reductions seen across the Vega line and with the RX 588GB that was scooped up in bulk by miners. The RX 580 8GB still isn't a particularly amazing buy in the current market, but with a 21% price drop compared to last month, it's more approaching a reasonable price for budget builds. However, in a similar vein to Nvidia's Pascal GPUs, Polaris is quite an old architecture right now, so I'd be hesitant jumping in when the price is still higher than its launch MSRP all those years ago. Okay, so that's pretty much where pricing is at for GPUs in March of 2022. Decent price drops across the board for all GPUs, which now sit at their lowest prices in over a year. The reductions we saw in March weren't quite as large as in February, but still relatively substantial compared to anything we saw in 2021, which is excellent news for PC builders and GPU buyers. GPUs are now readily available pretty much everywhere. Any model you could want is on shelves in some form or another. Now, of course, pricing still remains inflated over the advertised MSRPs from over a year ago, roughly 50% on average, but you no longer have to resort to the scalper market to get a GPU. In fact, you shouldn't, as GPUs are more expensive on eBay than at retail for new models, finally taking significant steps towards killing off the scalper market. Should you buy a new GPU right now? My answer to that is pretty similar to last month in that it depends on your situation. If you've been waiting ages and are comfortable to wait longer, I don't believe we have hit the price floor for GPUs yet and I think pricing close to MSRP is achievable, especially for more recent releases like the RTX 3050 and RX 6600. If you hold out, you'll likely get a better deal, but of course, I guess you shouldn't wait too long either. If you are desperate to upgrade or are looking to buy a new gaming PC right now, well, it is a pretty decent time, the best time of any in the past 18 months, so for some people it will make sense to buy a GPU. Whether or not you jump in now or continue to wait for the price floor to be hit, that depends on your situation and how desperate you are. The more inadequate your current GPU is, the, I guess the more reason there is to upgrade. I think it's also worth reminding people that the expectation is we are getting next generation GPUs at the end of this year. We recently put up a poll on Twitter asking whether you should buy a current gen GPU at MSRP right before those new GPUs launch, and it was a pretty split opinion, slightly in favour of not buying. This doesn't apply right now, but as we approach the launch of new GPUs in the next few months, it is a factor to consider. Personally, I believe we'll probably run into an availability issue again when next-gen GPUs launch and could even see prices rise for existing GPUs around that time, especially if current models are discontinued. So I would want to buy before that happens if I've been sort of thinking of buying at the moment. But of course, there's a lot of uncertainty as we are talking about many months in the future. So I guess that sort of discussion doesn't really apply just yet.
Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update. If you've been appreciating these updates over the past year and you want to support our independent analysis and testing, we do have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll get access to things like our monthly live streams, Discord chat, behind the scenes videos. Steve just recently posted a BTS video, so it's well worth checking that out. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.